Good day, my friends. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion and your old pal Ja. We're making our way through Orlando today. We're going to actually go to the cemetery that PGA golfer Payne Stewart's buried in. And we're going to talk about the really sad, horrifying way that he perished. And I'm actually going to tell you about how Patrick Swayze almost died the exact same way. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. We've made our way over to the Dr. Phillips Cemetery. That's actually the name of the town. Okay, let's see if we can't find him. I know he's around the lake, but I couldn't find an exact photo matchup or anything. Now, even though I didn't follow golf growing up, being a child born in the 80s, you couldn't help but know who certain golfers were like Jack Nicklaus, Chi Chi Rodriguez, and of course Payne Stewart because Payne Stewart dressed like a golfer from like the 30s. He always had like the knee high socks and the, the puffy pants and the, the old type hat and everything. And he was extremely successful, but he was kind of known for being what some people would say was arrogant in his life. But in 1999, he ended up having an untimely death and he was at the time the reigning PGA US Open champion and was actually the day of his death was supposed to finish up his tour for the year the next day in Houston. I actually just found him in this section over here all by himself. Haven't even made it over there yet and I can see the golf balls. Legend. William Payne Stewart passed away October 25th, 1999. The champion of our hearts, we will love you forever. I have set the Lord continually before me. He is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Psalm 16, 6. He became very devout his last couple of years of his life. So Payne Stewart was actually taking a private Lear jet from Orlando and was headed to Dallas where he was supposed to have a meeting where he was designing a golf course and he was gonna have a meeting and then continue on to Houston where he was gonna compete the next day for the end of the tour like I mentioned. Now what happened was the flight had both of his agents on board, um, another man that was helping him to design the course and a pilot and co-pilot and they took off from Orlando um, got word from Radio Control Tower in Jacksonville that they needed to elevate to 39,000 feet. The co-pilot responded and said okay. And then within two minutes of talking to them, the flight started going off course and was nine miles off course when they started contacting them trying to find out what was going on. No one was responding on the plane and they continued to try and contact them and make some sort of communication for the next half hour. The control tower immediately was, you know, alerted that this is really bad. Something must have happened to either the flight crew or something's happened on board. And so after half an hour, they sent an F-16 out of Pensacola to go up and chase down this flight and find out what was going on. Now, when the pilot in that F-16 finally got to Payne Stewart's plane, it was over top of Memphis, Tennessee. So instead of going through the panhandle from Orlando and then going west to Dallas, it was working its way in a straight line right up through the Memphis, Tennessee area. And when he got next to the plane, he noticed that there was condensation all over the windows and he couldn't see anyone inside, which was a really bad sign. It meant that the cabin pressure had failed and that basically everyone was frozen inside. It's actually something called hypoxia and it's basically where the cabin loses pressure and 
everyone loses oxygen inside and then eventually you know they they perish now what had to happen was that if no one's piloting the plane it was on autopilot at some point it was going to come down and so the several f-16s took turns uh, following the plane and for four hours the plane floated going through uh, like i said tennessee over missouri iowa and finally it was over south dakota when the gas started to run out and the right engine one of the f-16 pilots noticed failed and the plane started to spin to the right started basically just twirling and then the other engine failed and the plane just went straight down eight miles straight down and uh everyone of course sadly perished inside it was a, a horrific thing to think of people floating in the air flying through the air and no one can help and they you know they completely had lost oxygen and were were up there just waiting for the their demise it was a horrible story and like I mentioned on our way here, I was surprised to find out that Patrick Swayze had pretty much an exact similar circumstance that he lived through. Patrick Swayze in his book tells a story of, basically he says exactly what happened to Payne Stewart happened to me, except he said, I somehow survived. No one knows how I survived because people that get hypoxia don't survive. But what happened was he was a novice pilot he had his own plane he and his wife had been trained to fly and they loved to fly and they owned a property in new mexico near where patrick had filmed red dawn he loved that area and apparently new mexico had set a controlled fire to help get rid of some of the brush and it ended up getting out of control and patrick and his wife lisa were following on the news the path of this knowing that it was coming their way to their home in new mexico and so he said after two weeks of following this, he saw that it was coming right to their place. So he decided he wanted to fly from Van Nuys Airport out to their house and he wanted to get on a bulldozer and basically create a kind of a barricade around so that the fire would stop and not get to their property. So he took off and he had been very cautious. He was only flying at 13,000 feet because his wife a month before had been going out to Colorado to visit him while he was on set. And she started hearing a weird whistling and buzzing sound in the cockpit while she was flying. And she somehow, you know, being very um, knowledgeable, was able to know that it was lack of cabin pressure. And so she was able to land the plane without incident and they got the plane serviced and Patrick was, you know, taking it up for the first time since then and he was just being a little cautious just in case and he said basically next thing he knew he had put it on autopilot he was going 13,000 feet he was flying through California and he woke up and was seeing the land over his head in a spin and he ended up regaining consciousness able to land he th he realized as he got his bearings that he thought he was at the airport where he was looking to land but in reality it was actually a, a housing development that was being built and he was landing on the street of the housing development now <clears throat> this was crazy because what they ended up finding in an investigation was that um, Patrick and his wife were smoking cigarettes while they took these flights the override of the engine was um, gummed up and so that's what ended up causing it to lose pressure. Now, what was crazy was that he ended up reviving consciousness. What happened was that since he was going at 13,000 feet, eventually he just started to slowly lower in altitude until he finally hit a pocket of air where it brought him back and revived him. And that just, that never happens. Now this became kind of a controversy for Patrick Swayze because he was known at one time to have a bit of a drinking problem. He, um, his father had died and his way of dealing with it was to drink because his father had drank. And so Patrick had been known on sets to to sometimes you know be inebriated and he had put all that behind him and so when he was helped out of the plane he got out of the plane he had their two dogs with him and everything 
there were construction men working on that site that came over to help him and he had brought patrick had brought wine and beer with him which was not illegal but he was afraid because of his you people knew his history that he knew with a crash coming or with a crash happening that the news media would eventually be out there and if they knew it was him they'd definitely be out there and so he gave the alcohol to the construction workers just so it wouldn't be an incident and then when everything he had called his wife after the accident Lisa to let her know that he had crashed the plane and because of the hypoxia he had had slurred speech which happens you know with that and so she thought maybe he was drunk as well and so she was upset but in the end it was investigated and it was ruled that it was a mechanical failure on the airplane and it was that override valve that was gummed up they should not have been smoking on there but that's what caused that to happen and when they interviewed him they said you're the first person we've ever been able to interview that has survived hypoxia pilots do not survive that so the way that Payne Stewart went out, Patrick Swayze almost lost his life. And it was crazy, he, he couldn't understand it, he said, because he had just almost died like a year or two ago doing a horse stunt for a, a film. Instead of letting his stuntman do it, he decided to do it himself and almost died doing that. So he was wondering, after this incident, he said, I was having nightmares constantly. I would wake up and think, and I would see myself passed out in our plane flying up in the air. And he said, I really started to question what I was doing with my life as far as am I making any difference by making these movies? What should I be doing? Because God, for some reason, keeps saving me. Not really a bad place to have your eternal rest. He did have a wife and two children. So I'm wondering if they will be buried out here or beside him as well. The crash site actually happened on a farmer's land and it left a giant crater in the ground that was 40 feet by 30 feet and 10 feet deep and so they took one of the giant rocks that they found in that crater and created a memorial out in that field to all who perished that day with a biblical quote on there and it's very classily done and there's and the entire section of where the crash was is barbed wired off in a fence to keep people out, but to also respect their memory, which I thought was very classy. Unfortunately for Payne Stewart, just trying to go and earn a living for his family, and he was trying to go make arrangements for the golf course he was planning, and just an absolute freak accident took his life. All right, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I wanna thank Patty Fischetti for becoming my newest Patreon, helping to support this channel. And if nothing else that you got out of this video, I hope it, a little bit of an appreciation for every day. Thank you all. If you're new here, please hit the like button, please subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. Have a great night and goodbye.